Hey, what is up everyone? This is Caleb, and I am a tutorial on... <laughs> oh, hey everybody. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about Bitcoin, or I guess proof of work, even a little bit more generally, target and difficulty. Now, as difficult as that sounds, trust me, it's really not that bad. So you might wanna check out my previous episode where I talked about proof of work and how it works. And in this, there's something known as a target and it has to do with the hash function. But before we do word stuff, you should probably check out our sponsor, Crypto.com. Crypto.com is a simple app to buy and sell cryptocurrency. With one of the largest selections, this is the perfect app to explore different cryptocurrencies, their prices, and information about them. Additionally, you're able to stake your cryptocurrency for consistent growth in your balance. Best of all, Crypto.com is known for their crypto rewards debit card. Get crypto back for every purchase and get started for free. Sign up with the referral code CALEB and get a $25 bonus when you stake for the Ruby debit card. Look for a link below. So if you have a soul and you want to support this channel, please check out Crypto.com. Appreciate it much. All right, so, oh, and don't forget Caleb, that's my referral code. Don't forget to get that debit card, you know. So we have a hash function, such as SHA-256, and this takes an input and gives us an output known as a hash value. And the way Bitcoin miners win is by calculating a hash value below a certain target. So winner is below target. Now this target exists as a tool to adjust how difficult it is to win in proof of work. In proof of work, the miners have to prove that they've done the work by calculating a hash value below that target, but the amount of total work required goes up and down. This target exists as a tool to adjust the difficulty of Bitcoin mining. So as the target goes up, it becomes easier because getting under a larger number is easier. As the target goes down, the acceptable values are decreased, so it becomes more difficult. So this is directly related to difficulty, which is pretty much a more human readable inverse of this. So, you know, as the target goes up, the difficulty goes down, and as the target goes down, the difficulty goes up. So you'll hear both, but they're not interchangeable. They're like the opposite. This is just a more friendly variation because it's a little confusing to think of the target and you know increasing that target makes it easier. So difficulty is just a little bit more user friendly, but they're basically describing the same thing. And that is the total effort required across the Bitcoin network. Or you know, if you're working with a different proof of work network, how much computation is required for that proof of work. And this whole concept of difficulty and target is where some of the controversy in Bitcoin comes up. Basically, this value for this target is adjusted and it's always going to take 10 minutes for a new block to be added to the blockchain. So 10 minutes, I think my upside down writing is better than my normal writing. And so no matter what, let's say in the case of Bitcoin, everybody in the entire world started mining Bitcoin. That 10 minute thing is programmed into the protocol. So the target is adjusted up and down such that more computational power does not equal more blocks added to the blockchain. It's only a new block every 10 minutes. So the controversy is, hey, is Bitcoin really scalable? You know, as more and more people adopt it, the energy consumption of Bitcoin continues to go up and up and up, but we're not getting a faster rate of new Bitcoin or we're not getting faster transactions. Ultimately, the Bitcoin network stays pretty much the same. The only difference is the target has gone down and down and down also known as the difficulty has gone up and up and up, but the end result is pretty much the same. But a lot of people think this is a good thing. You know, strong protocols make the system trustworthy. And that's one of the big reasons Bitcoin has been so successful is because 
we know we know what's built into the protocol. We can trust it. A lot of people don't want to follow a network that just doubles its output of cryptocurrency. You know, we want something that has a very consistent, predictable monetary policy. Now, if you're looking at a blockchain explorer, you might see this target in the block header as bits. That's what it's talking about. Reading this target isn't 100% clear because it's encoded. So difficulty is just a more friendly option to look at. How exactly does this target get updated? Well, every 2016 blocks, it's updated, which is about every two weeks. So if everybody in the entire world jumped on that network, well, it might not be for two weeks until the target gets adjusted. So for that period of time, blocks might be added to the network a lot faster. But as soon as that two weeks hits, then it's going to be readjusted. The target's going to be much lower, which makes it a whole lot harder to get a successful mine. So now I wanna talk a little bit about hash rates and how they're related to difficulty and target. So first up, when it comes to hash rates, I wanna talk about the network hash rate. This is the rate of hashing, the computation of these hash values for the entire network. And the number is insanely huge. Like I've checked the value numerous times and I still feel like I'm incorrect because it's just like, dang, that's huge. So let me just write it out and heck, just so you feel the pain of how long it takes to write out a giant number like this, I'm just gonna leave this playing, all right? I am slow. Ran out of space here, but hot dang. This is starting to look like my student loan debt. So this is 150 quintillion hashes per second. You may also see it as 150 EHS per S. There we go. So 150 quintillion hashes per second or 150 Exa hashes. <laughs> or 150 exa hashes. There we go. And you know, if you're watching this in the future, this number might actually go up. But fortunately, the target is also a good thing, right? Because let's say Bitcoin crashes, people don't really want to talk about it or hear about it anymore. Well, poor me, because my views will my views will go down, but that target's going to readjust and then mining is not gonna be as competitive. And this is important with things such as the halving. So in Bitcoin, uh, let's be halving, halving. Basically every four years, the Bitcoin reward is cut in half. Right now it's 6.25, and in about three years or so, it's gonna be 3.1 to 150, 1.25. 5 divided by 2, 3.125, okay, we're good. <laughs> so then the reward for Bitcoin is much less. People might not want to mine as much, which will increase the target value. So we have to get below a higher number, which ultimately makes it easier to mine. Now, when people talk about cryptocurrency mining and they bring up hash rate, they're usually not talking about the network hash rate. Instead, they're talking about their own hash rate which you can think of it as a percentage of the total network hash rate. If say you contributed 10% of the hash rate for the network, well, in that situation, you're going to win about 10% of the time. So when you're building a Bitcoin mining machine or pretty much any proof of work machine, you can figure out what your hashing rate is and basically use that as a benchmark to see if it's a competitive mining computer. Ultimately, the goal for this would basically be to reduce the amount of dollars per hash. All right, now there might be a better way to calculate it, but basically, I'm just kind of pulling this out of my brain. The cheaper the hash you can get, that system is better. So it's not always about building the most boss computer to do the mining. It's about the most efficient per dollar. 
So a computer that costs twice as much may only have a hashing rate that's 1.5 times as much. So it would be better to have the smaller system in that situation and just have two of them. But we're not talking about building Bitcoin mining machines in this video. Maybe in the future, maybe that could be a little series of its own. But that's just what I wanted to throw out there. There's a difference between an individual's hashing rate and the network's hashing rate. So another thing is mining pools. And in this situation, numerous people will pull their computers together and basically build this one giant Bitcoin or cryptocurrency mining pool. Pool. And these nodes basically will split the rewards. So this is great if you don't have enough computational power to realistically win ever, <laughs> then you can just contribute to a pool. And when that pool wins, you'll get some reward. There's a lot of different pools out there. There's a lot of different concerns with pools. They're not always just, oh, this is a Bitcoin mining pool. Oftentimes you will join a pool and you will just mine whatever. <laughs> you'll just basically contribute your computer and that pool controls what you're mining and you'll just get rewarded different cryptocurrencies. There's a lot of complexities around pools and also a lot of concerns around pools because like, you know, what if just one pool or maybe just one or two or three pools contribute half or more of the computational power, then we have a really strong centralization of these mining pools. That doesn't necessarily throw the entire network into jeopardy because we still rely heavily on the full nodes, which basically verify all the work of the miners. And they're the ones that really control the protocol of the network. But there's still a lot of concerns out there with that. And you can research some of the risks of centralized mining if you're interested. Last thing, this is just about proof of work. This is just one of many consensus mechanisms. So you also want to learn about proof of stake, other things like proof of space or proof of burn. And this is probably what we'll be talking about in the next video. And if you just want to get a good overview of everything when it comes to cryptocurrency and blockchain technology, then check out the playlist and just watch it from the beginning. I think it'd be a really great way to learn and I'd enjoy to have you here for the series. So if you've enjoyed the content so far, please be sure to subscribe, check out our sponsor, and stay tuned for the upcoming videos. See ya.